Good evening, class. My name is Marsha Land, and I will be your moderator for this evening's class. To all Zoom particip participants, please mute your mic and block your camera. Thank you. Welcome to another lecture given to the Charlotte, North Carolina Zoom class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Charlotte, North Carolina Zoom class was established in August of 2020. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the father, the word or son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained 
in the original Hebrew text, the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. And until the 1400 years after the Messiah's death, Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. This we have drawn we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him, in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our primary constitution objectives and aims 
of the Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. A, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10th, to inherit, eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We will begin class with the prayer given by Dr. Jackie McCain. Dr. McCain. Good evening, brethren. Let us all bow our hearts and mind and thanking Yahweh for another opportunity to come to hear the words of life, the beautiful words of life that he's given us through this divine vision and divine revelation. Thanking him for giving us the unction to want to know more and to want to continue to learn more. We thank you, Yahweh, with all that is in us to be grateful. In the name of Yahshua, let us all say hallelujah. 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 And thank you for the song given by um, the Florida Choir and the prayer given by Dr. Jackie McCain. And good evening again, class. Tonight we will be listening to our SoundCloud tape, number eight and number 16. Um, and the class may be held uh, maybe over maybe eight minutes. Okay. And thank you. Now it is an honor and a pleasure to call on our Dean and Emeritus, Emeritus, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. Dr. Kinley. The fourth chapter of Exodus. Of Exodus. Some of the various chapters of books. Uh, I reference something like this. Uh, in the beginning of my vision, or uh, at such and such a time, I had a vision. <coughs> now this was back when the book was written. And the book is eternal in the message that it contains. Now it just stands to reason that if the Father chose to make things known to man through visions in those days, that that would continue. It has. Yeah. Now, the reason Moses knew and uh, Noah knew that the flood was coming was because he had a vision. And it was real. He preached for 120 years to the four corners of the earth. He saw something. Our founder, Dean, also saw something. He had a vision and a revelation. You can see the result of it depicted on these charts. 
you study these charts, that book, the Bible, will be unlocked to you. All the, the keys to understand it are on these charts here. Our first speaker of the evening will be our founder, Dr. Henry C. Kim. As Jason said, I was glad let us go into the house of Yahweh. <laughs> Whenever there is an opportunity to learn something about the true deity of this universe, I think we ought to take advantage of that opportunity. It doesn't make so much difference about who it comes from, just since it comes. And then I have told all of you, uh, ever since you have been knowing me, study everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. It makes no difference what it is, what doctrine, uh, what philosophy, atheism, agnosticism, see? Uh, just study everything. Don't, don't let nothing lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know uh, whether you all have just obeyed that or not, but nevertheless, I do want to say right here, as strange as it may seem, I have did just exactly that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you are not going to come up with nothing new. That's right. Nobody. That's right. You're just not going to do that. Now, this is almost a criticism. And I'm sick and tired of getting up here saying it. Now, what you see pictured here and what I have been trying to tell you or explaining to you, of course, some of you know that, is <coughs> not some philosophical concept, some hallucination or imagination that I, as your founder and being, have been trying to tell you something about. That, that's not what this is. Right. And I want to make, make this clear again. <clears throat> See, I want to make it clear. I have had a vision and a revelation. Mm -hmm. I talk with the Creator. Mm -hmm. See, I know Him. Now, first thing somebody would say, now that's a lie. That's only natural for people to say that. And if they're not going to say that, they don't believe you. Well, this is what I've asked you to do through these 38 years. If since I've made a statement like that, it's your job and your responsibility to make me prove it. See? Just getting up saying something don't mean anything to me. And it shouldn't mean anything to you. Now, let me say this. Sitting in this audience and elsewhere uh, around the United States of America, there are educators sitting in this audience and elsewhere in this uh, in this country that have sat under our teaching. And they are out of every sect, cult, denomination that you want to name. It really does not make any difference. It don't make any difference. And now somebody might not understand that unless you name some of it. 
Well, we've got them out of the Roman Catholic Church and out of the Protestant churches, too. Then for fear that somebody might think, again, that uh, we're confused about the issue yet. See? I want to tell you to begin with, Christian doom is a profound failure. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> Now, we're not going to make any bones out of that. So you're just going to say it right out flat. It's a faith. Roman Catholics and Protestants, neither one, do not know what they are talking about. Right. They don't understand what they're talking about. That's right. And when I say that, listen, I don't want you to misunderstand. I mean from the first chapter. And the first verse and the first sentence in your Bible from there on to the back. That's right. <laughs> they do not know anything about it. That's right. Right. Now somebody would be persuaded. See, out of some of these churches, to say, well, now I know that's about it. <laughs> I admit that it does sound like one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit that. See, it, it, it does sound like one. But the real truth about it is, and that's one of the reasons why we had uh, them to read where they read at in the Bible. One of, one of the reasons. Now, don't you forget, I told you that I was caught up into heaven itself. And I chose, and I've been saying this for 30 years until I'm getting sick of it myself. And just to say that don't mean nothing. That's right. And I want to let you know too, that the arm said, I never went to school. Now, sitting right in our audience, I want to repeat this so we can get straightened out. Because oftentimes when you move on, somebody's got the wrong conception. Now, I'll tell you how plain you talk. So I'll right. plain you speak. That's, that's we have people sitting in this audience and elsewhere <laughs> around over the country. And we do mean the doctors, the medical doctors, <laughs> and the patients. That every known kind of a disease, known to man, has been healed. And there isn't anybody in this building that don't know that me as a man, I simply cannot do that. I can't do that. Even Yahshua the Messiah, when you know where it's Christ himself. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. My father in me, he doeth the work. Now, if he couldn't do it, see, neither can you. Get the point? There is no such thing as a divine healer on this earth. Mm, that's right. Mm, that's right. Now, it looks like what I have already stated is, is misconstrued. I just got through telling you there's people sitting here, and the doctors too, and the patients that have been healed of every kind of a disease. It went so far as even to raise some from the dead. Now, what I'm trying to get over to you is this. You know that what I am talking about, see, is impossible for any man to do. There must be. The creator must be involved in it. Yes. 
Do you all understand me thus far? Now I told you I had a chart, a vision, and a revelation. Now here, this is what we have here. We have pictures it all around. Right. And you have stood. And it's been in the colleges. It's been in the universities. It's been in the educational institutions. And this one right here is a bed sheet. And it's older than a lot of people in here. It's about 37 years old. I'm sure we have some folks in the audience that isn't quite that old. And with opening it up and rolling it up and down as it, as it has been done so many times, you see, I don't think you could hardly find one. I don't care what you paid for. <laughs> that will last any longer than uh, 37 years. I don't care whether you got any Sears or anybody else. <laughs> so there's something, there's a great story behind that. But I don't want to go into that. See? Uh, now, I was instructed, see, uh, you say God. I was instructed, I, I tried to talk so you can understand, I was instructed by God himself to make this work you're seeing around here. Mm -hmm. They didn't make it all more. And I'd like to go further and make this statement. There hasn't been anybody from anywhere regardless to their particular denomination, sect, cult, creed, or religion that ever understood it that was able to deny it. That's right. That's right. Can't do it. I remember what the president said one time. Uh, when he uh, first began to study around uh, 36 or 37 years ago, or trying to ask for this topic made. He stood up to it one time and he looked at it. And he said, now that thing will take your picture, won't it? I think it's equipped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your picture is on. That's right. That's right. That's the truth. This is it. That's the truth. That's the truth. And I want to tell you this, there is nothing in this physical universe, the physical parts of this universe, there is nothing in it that it doesn't deal with. Now that includes you. Okay. You take your part. Cell at a time. Adam at a time. You understand? Now you can't argue with it. You see? You just can't argue with it. That is, if you understand it. Of course, if you don't understand it, as one person said, when they looked at this chart over here, this is what they say. That that looks like scrambled eggs to me. See? Of course, they'll teach you too here. But that's what they said when they first seen it. <coughs> but they changed that story. That's right. And we have some here that come and they looked at it and said, well, we agree on all of it back here. And but uh, uh, they are from from the but from here on, that's why we don't get along so well. See? Now here's what they didn't know. That if they agreed with with this back here, see, 
He was he was oh, captured man. over here. Now you didn't right. know that. But he found that out, didn't you, Dad? <laughs> now here sat the medical doctor. We asked him to give a lecture on childbirth. See? When he first got into school. And he obliged. <laughs> and when he finished up, see. Well then we took this did this work and we went right into it. See? Now y'all have heard his, heard, heard his own testimony many times. <coughs> right? Right. Mm-hmm. You see? So now, what I'm saying, I'm saying it for the benefit of those that are here the first time and don't don't understand. Yeah. Now that's what I'm saying it for. Mm-hmm. See? Otherwise, uh, I wouldn't be making these statements. Because I want you to be familiar with what's, what is up here on these charts. Okay. Now, not only that, I would say this, to kind of try to attract your attention, and get you to pay attention. There has no major catastrophe or event that has happened in the world, anywhere in the world, where we didn't tell you about it in advance. And then on top of all that, we told you, now if it don't happen, like we tell you, don't come back no more because there won't be no more school. We're going to fold the thing up. We're going to quit. We ain't going to have no more school. Now that sounds fantastic too, don't it? But it's all right up here. <coughs> Every bit of it is right up here on, on these on these work. <coughs> and you yourself, in your in your own body, you've been into it many times. Now, let me go on with this uh, idea, this thought. Nobody uh, would hardly try to make a suit of clothes or anything you see, without some measurements or without some kind of pattern. You wouldn't do that, would you? Oh, I know people that have done a lot of things, but I'm talking about doing a thing right. Yeah. Well, now, if you will look uh, in the 25th chapter, now I'm going to stick to this book. Uh, in the 25th chapter of Amos. Now, don't you forget, I told you. See, don't overlook this one. I'm going in the Bible now. All right. But don't you overlook the fact that I told you that the King James Version and the Vulgate, which is the Roman Catholic Bible, and them, all of them on top of it, see, was wrong. Don't forget that now. Don't forget that. See. Then somebody would say, well, what are you going in the Bible for? Mm-hmm. I didn't say the Bible was wrong. Mm-hmm. It's what the translators put in it that's wrong. Mm-hmm. You understand? And it's misleading. Yeah. And you can't get the truth out of the King James Version and all that. A verdict. And the reason why you can't is because it's not in there. All right. Mm-hmm. <coughs> now this Bible we're reading out of, and some people would say, I knew you had uh, 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 one of them new Bibles and all them different kind of things. See, no. Let's, let's straighten that up too. Mm-hmm. See? 
This is the original. In other words, what is in this book, see, what is in this book is that which is put back in it where it belongs. Them books you got, uh, King James Version and uh, uh, all in time, uh, different ones, see, see, those are the new ones. <laughs> see? This, as uh, 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 the moderator, here, can you tell you, Yahweh is the original name <laughs> of the Father. I mean, the Moses. No, everybody. <coughs> say, Eloi. Say, and Yahshua the Messiah, not Jesus Christ. See. Now, is it clear? Now, I, what I'm after now is going in this Bible where they have put the original name, Hebrew name, back in it. And Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Now, listen, somebody get me wrong there, too. Somebody said, well, you mean to tell me that Moses is the author? I didn't say that. I said he wrote. All right. Okay. <laughs> See, it's so easy to misunderstand. Right. See, here's the author. Right. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, we That's right. But Moses just wrote down what he saw in the vision. See, get the point? So he's the author, not me, not Moses. Get the point. Now, I want you to read the 25th chapter of Exodus in the 40th verse. 8th chapter of Hebrews in the 5th verse. And look that thou make all of them after their pattern. Now, now he, what he is telling Moses here, uh, he's telling him about this tabernacle. <laughs> That's what he's telling Moses about this tabernacle that he saw in a vision. You better get this thing off of you. Uh, if I get in a hurry, which I don't want to do because I'm, I'm conscious yeah. mm -hmm. that we do have some new people in this audience and I am anxious for them to, to understand that. Yeah. That is my mission in this world. Other than that, I don't even care nothing about living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. That's what I came in the world for. See, and I don't care nothing about <laughs> nothing else in it. Well, then this is what I'm telling you. That's right. Not interested in a thing. See? Okay. And let me, while I'm, while I'm on that score, I think I ought to take this. Let him talk. Before you read any further. I could have been, if what I am telling you now wasn't the truth, I want to let you know I come to Los Angeles in 1958. And I could have been a monster millionaire back in 35, long before I came here. That's right. Then I've had millions of it to me. And you just can't pay me. That's not my mission. Mm -hmm. See? So I don't want nobody to think. This, they hadn't, had do, all the 38 years that I've been teaching, that's supposed to have been with me, haven't you? Have you ever known? Anybody at any time during these 38 years, and we've had better than 350 people, and you ever see them take up a collection for me? No, sir. Have I ever been on any payroll? No. Have I ever drawn a salary? No. Have I ever drawn one cent? Now I'm proving to 
you that I'm not interested in nothing but you. See? And you can't, you can't entice me with no kind of money. Because I've been off to it, off to, and you sit and seen them off me. Millions. See? That's too cheap. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Yes, That's too cheap. Mm -hmm. Yahshua the Messiah walked the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And this is what he said. See? And embodied or incarnated in him was his father Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Or the Holy Spirit. And he said, the foxes have holes, and the birds, they have nests, but the Son of Man don't even have nowhere to lay his head. When they buried him in Joseph's new tomb, they had to barn. They don't know real estate. That's right. And yet he was the creator, yeah. incarnated in the whole thing. Do you understand? What did he come for then? He come to seek and to save that great was lost. Who's lost? The Father now. It's the man that's lost. I'm seeking nothing else but that. And that's the reason why I said you ought to go. That's my only mission and my only concern. See? You know, I found that out though, but you let me know. Yeah. See? And I mean, I'm deeply concerned too. Now, you have uh, Exodus 25 40 and Hebrews 8 5. And look that thou make them after their pattern. And look, see, Yahweh is telling Moses, uh, why are he's up in this mountain? See, he's seen a vision of this is just like pure spirit. <laughs> see, you can't see it. Now, this is the cloud. See, that brought him up out of the land of Egypt. Now the house of Bob. And now here it is over Mount Sinai. And Moses has gone up into that mountain. I have to kind of cut this up kind of short because I, I want you to see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Now Yahweh, who is the Father, nobody <coughs> has ever seen him at any time. It's a matter of absolute impossibility. Mm -hmm. Now here's why. See, you can't get outside of him to look back at him. <laughs> For it's in him you live, and you move, and you have your being. <coughs> See, and listen, he is spirit. <coughs> now I had to do something about that. This cloud symbolizes the realm of eternity that Moses is up, up here in the mountain. And he is seeing a vision. He's seeing a vision of him, say, Yahweh, symbolized by the cloud, has taken on a, a body, see? And that body is this right here that we are telling you about. See, Lord. Now that is not a physical body. You cannot see that with your eyes. You can't see this or the pot, and neither can you see that with your physical eyes. Uh -huh. See, so Moses is seeing it in a vision atop Mount Sinai. Now, if you're real smart, see, Mount Sinai is in Arabia. Now, I've even told you the geographical location, see, of where the man had to be. See? Now, he sees it in, uh, see, and then he's transformed into this tabernacle. 
And that's this tabernacle here. And now what you're reading there, he's telling Moses yes. to see to it that you make all things that I showed you in the mind according to the path. You see? Now if you fail to do that, then you've messed up every animate and inanimate object in the universe. That's what you did. And you don't have nothing to go by to prove nothing with. <coughs> See? Now that's over there in Exodus 25 and 40. He's trying to make it, make it like, like he sees the, the pattern that was shown to him in the mountain. So now when Moses came down out of the mountain, you see, at the proper time, and I don't have time to go into all these visits in the mountain, you know. I'm, I'm trying to get at a direct point. See, he made the tabernacle a tangible, a physical tabernacle like the one he saw in the vision. This is an intangible and this is a tangible. Say, you understand? See? Now, let me tell you about this uh, uh, tabernacle. You can see it here. You see, it, this is the exterior of it. This is the interior. You can see the interior of it there. Here, by taking this, this is the most holy place, the holy place, and the outer court. This is the most holy place, the holy place, and the outer court. See? Now here, this is the most holy place, the holy place, and the outer court, the court around the back. You see? In other words, that's three poles. You see? And he cautioned him when he was about to make it. Now, you make sure you make it like that told you. Uh, yeah. Of course, now, they, he had some uh, uh, construction workers down there yeah. that knew more about how to fix it than what the boss did. They told him how to fix it. See? So he did, Moses just said, now, look, whoever's on the Lord's side, I'm just talking so you can understand, he drew a line. He said, uh, now, you get over here, and all them on Aiden, Dayton, and Cora's side. See, you get over there. Yeah. See, we don't want to argue about it. See, Moses has seen this in the vision. Yeah. And listen, I mean to tell you, he was by himself and alone. Yeah. Nobody on there seen it but him. Yeah. <laughs> he was the first and only man there was in the world up until that time that had seen it. So, all right. So he caught it now to me. Threefold. Now here's what that does. You see, by making it threefold. Had a most holy place. You can see it better on this one. And we like to use this one. Most holy place, holy place, and an outer court. Now this is called the pattern. See? Now, this is what this does. See, this takes your picture. This is the creator himself transfigured into this. Right. Okay. Now listen, he himself is the archetype or the original pattern of the universe. <laughs> now listen, nothing in the universe makes no difference what it is. Can get away from that. Say, including you. Now let's let's take a little uh, research, see, modern research. <laughs> see, you now we say, well, now we're going to look for uh, atomic, yeah. see, atomic research <coughs> in the basic particles of matter, 92, see, <coughs> you and 91 of them had a Proton, electron, and what else? Mm -hmm. A proton, a neutron, mm -hmm. and an electron. Mm -hmm. right. You see? Mm -hmm. That's what it has. Mm -hmm. See? Now you have here the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. They, I'm talking to people in the Bible, the people that's got King James Version. Mm -hmm. See? You got the Father, the Son, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. 
See? These three are one. One what? Just like you are numa, psychic, and soul. In other words, you're soul, body, and spirit. And you make one man. Not three. <coughs> See? This makes one tabernacle. See, this is the thought once, so you can understand, one body. See? Get the point? Now, the vessel then. See, we said a proton, a neutron, an electron. <coughs> Somebody said, well, now wait a minute. What about the cell? You see? All right. Now, what have you got in the cell? Nucleolus. You have the nucleolus, the nucleus, and the cell body. So you haven't got nowhere. You haven't got away from it. Is that right? What are you? Body, soul, and spirit. You see? You see what I'm talking about? See? Now, this is what you got. And this is what we are saying to it. So you can see what we're talking about. Now, we're talking about every atomic particle of matter there is that makes up this universe. They say, magnesium, silicon, and carbon, and get that, that you carry on, you see, it makes up this universe. Then but one of them, and that's the hydrogen atom, <laughs> and it's threefold too. But you see, you can't see the mass invisible right. counterpart, or the last invisible part of it, any more so than you can see pure spirit. It's that that you can't see. Ain't nothing, ain't no instrument, ain't no fix enough to do it. You just can't see it. <laughs> see? Get the point. Now I can put my hand on your head, but that's not on your mind. <laughs> See, that's your body. You get the point. Now this is what we have done thus far. We have analyzed every bit of the atomic particles of matter that makes up this universe. We've analyzed. Mm -hmm. We took the cell. We took you. You understand? And we took everything. You see what I mean? Now look. Now listen carefully. Do you recall that I said when I first got up here? See, that there wasn't any of what we haven't found any that understood the Bible, Roman Catholics or Protestants. They haven't even under, understood the first sentence. See? Now that sounds bad. Now look, you you're reading in the 24th chapter one. And that's why you read that 24th chapter. That's right. You see. Now you read uh, the 16th verse, I believe it is. And the glory of Yahweh. No, I decided to read the first and second verse. <laughs> and he said unto Moses. And he said unto Moses. Come up unto Yahweh. Come up unto Yahweh. Thou, thou, and Aaron, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders, and seventy of the elders of, of Israel, and yes. worship ye afar off, and worship ye afar off. See, is that what it says there? Read the next verse. And Moses alone. Listen here, folks. You listen at me too. Get this thing straight. And Moses alone and by himself. <coughs> another man on earth. See? Now that's the reason why I'm trying my best to tell you. See? You can't do nothing with it. But that's a revelation. Right. Right. That's See? And Moses alone. See? Now that means this. See? Did anybody try to Moses know everything about it? Mm -hmm. See? Now, man, 
See? Get this straight. The high priest went into the most holy place once every year. By himself, and if you please, alone. That's right. All right. See? And Yahweh, his Lord, told Moses, Aaron was the high priest. He said, Listen, you tell your brother not to be running in now here. If he does, he's just going to find a head. You see what I mean? You don't do it that way. You see? Now you see what we're reading about. All right now, read the 16th verse. And the glory of Yahweh upon... Uh, uh, about the 9th and 10th. And, and let's hurry, because I want to get out of the way. Then went up Moses, and Aaron <laughs> made gathered up by you, and 70 of the elders of Israel. Uh, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now, now here's what, when you read the Bible, See, the majority of people don't have sense enough to realize, you see, that they're looking at a vision. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. See? That's right. Now, you just got to saying, and they saw the God of Israel, as you have it in your King James Version. Mm -hmm. Now, you turn right over in the first chapter of John. John says, no man at no time has ever seen God. Right. Now, you got to a combination. The smart boy that man able to straighten it up. Get the point. All right. And there was under his feet. And, and there was. Now listen. Now he described it. And there was under his feet. As it were. Now he got feet. Yeah. All right, read. As it were a paved work of sapphire. Work. As it was a paved work of sapphire work. And as it were the body, as it were the, the body of heaven and its clearance. Of heaven and its clearance. Now wait, now you said body. You said feet, and then you said body. See, read on. See if she can find out anything. And upon the nobles of the and children, upon the nobles of the children of Israel. The children of Israel. He laid not his hand. Now he got a hand. <laughs> See that now? And yet it just wasn't seen in there uh, at all, you see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't look at these things. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Okay? All right. Read on. And Yahweh said unto Moses, uh -huh. Come up unto me into the mount and be there. Uh -huh. And I will give thee tables of stone uh -huh. and a law and commandments which I have written, mm -hmm. that thou mayest teach them. Uh -huh. And Moses rose up, uh -huh. and his minister... Now listen, him. and Moses. Now here's my catch is. Here's uh -huh. another one of them catches. Say, and Moses. See, now, now, now you're going to get arrested about this. But you just got to the top. And Moses, and what? And Moses rose up, and his minister... Moses up. rose up. And his minister, Joshua. Joshua. Mm -hmm. See? Now, that properly should have been translated Joshua. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Now, I'd like to know where he's going. Now, get me straight now, so you don't overlook the thing. You remember he told you there in the second verse of the first chapter? said, Moses alone by himself come in this club. Well, where is Joshua going? <laughs> Said Moses, you understand? And, and what did he say to him? And Moses went up into the mountain mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the elders... Now he said unto the elders... Tarry ye here now you, us. Uh, you wait here until we get back. We who? Me and Joshua. <laughs> <All right. coughs> Get that now? <laughs> Until we get back. Now they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. See what they done was went on back and built the golden cave. Mm -hmm. 
Now somebody said, well, now listen, I don't preach that. You see? Well, all right, let me, let me ask you this. If you don't want to buy that, you remember Joshua, look at a man walking around you. Him and Moses spoke. A man. See? No parents. Son of none. See what I mean? <coughs> oh, this, this, this boss I'm talking about, he's something else. You understand? See? Now, the point I want to get you to see is, he rose up and told them to stay in San Diego. But you stay here till we get back. Yeah. Till Joshua and me get back. Yeah. Now, if he told Moses to come in the cloud alone, now what I'm saying to you, what's jo where is Joshua going? Get the point? See, this is a deep mystery. Yeah. Then somebody said, well, look, I don't believe that. All right, now you don't want to buy that. All right, then we just step right over here. There's the same Yahshua, the Messiah, All right. walking around down here on the earth. Right. Now, he said he come to fulfill that which was written by that. Isn't that right? Yeah. And didn't he take Peter James to down up in the mouth and translate it to book? Yeah. Did he do that? Yeah. Yeah. And if he didn't, that back there ain't no good. Right. Good point. Yeah, yeah. All right, so read, the, read the next verse. Now, now, I want you to catch this next verse. And don't forget, I told you, I haven't seen none, nobody, that understood this Bible. Read. And the glory of Yahweh and abode, the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai. Abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it. Now get days. this straight, folks. Get this straight. And the cloud covered it six days. Then what happened? And the seventh day. And the seventh day. He called unto Moses. Now, listen here, Freddy. Ain't a thing said about what happened in the cloud during them six days. Is there anything there? Do you see it there? Yes, well, here's where the problem is. Here's why I said what I did. All right. See? Moses took what he saw in the vision during them six days that he was in the mountain and put it in the first chapter of Genesis. Right. He said in the beginning, and everybody thinks he talked about in the beginning of creation. He talked about in the beginning of history. He was told to what happened. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth without form, the darkness upon the face of the deep spirit. God moved upon the face of the body. God said, let there be light. And there was the evening and the morning was the first day. Is that right? Yeah. Now you're talking about, you're talking about going somewhere in the Bible. See? Listen to this. Just the evening and the morning. That was the day. Well, it would ordinarily be night. That was the day. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, In other words, he just wasn't no <laughs> Now somebody said, no, I don't believe that stuff either. Then uh -huh. John looked back at us. Yeah. He said, I didn't see no. You're all right. No he said, I didn't see no nice. <laughs> 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 now we can tell whether Moses is lying or not. You see, Moses said, the earth was surrounded by what? Yeah. Is that right? John was out on the aisle of heaven. And don't you sit up here and tell me it's not surrounded by water. And I mean it's still yet surrounded by water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. You see? And he's looking back at what Moses said. See, in, in other words, the beginning of Moses' bit and the beginning of him got to be just alive. That's right. <laughs> you see what I mean? Surrounded by water. Now listen here, folks. This is what you got. And then what I just said. Now you've got the first chapter of Genesis. <coughs> you see, and then you've got Revelation. And I ain't never seen nobody that's able to explain. Yeah, right. Right. Back to back. That's why I said to you what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? At all the 
picture. I'm 73, going on 74 years old. <coughs> Say, now I've been somewhere. You see? You get it? Now you see what I'm talking about? You see? Now look, let me show you just, just, just one or two more things here. Now the cloud covered it six days. Now what Moses did, see he just put that right over the vision that he saw of the creation of heaven and earth. Now look and watch this now. Do you remember that I told you, you understand, that the atom was a proton, a neutron, and an electron? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Do you remember I told you that you were new, psychic, and so on, mm -hmm. or soul, body, and spirit? Mm -hmm. Do you remember I told you that the that the cell, it was threefold. Do you remember that? Right. Do you remember I told you that this tabernacle was through threefold? Most toward the place, toward the place, and then out of the court. Now watch, watch. I want you to read a verse from it, huh? Romans 1, 19 and 20, and I'll be right back into it. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Now read it fast. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. Now because, listen, it's possible for you to know something. I'm not talking about no speculation. I'm not talking about no guessing. Or feeling. I can do it. presume it. Yeah, yeah. Right. You see? Say mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, read it. It manifests in them. It manifests in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. You see, Yahweh showed it to us in a million times. All right, read it. For the invisible now listen, things of him. For the invisible things. Okay. From the creation from of the, the world. From the creation of the world. Are clearly seen. Are clearly seen. Being understood. By being the understood things. by the things that are made. You can't argue you are made. An atom, a proton, electron. You understand? A tabernacle. Everything is made. See? Then it's right from the creation of the world. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? right? Now here's what I want to show you that. And here's why I went to that. You know what you said from the creation? Right. See? Now look at right there. See, each one of them days that Moses sings. Get this way in that dish. They were divided up. All right. Just like that tablet. See? God dividing the light from the dark. Yeah. He divided the water to the world, the water to the yeah. You understand? Yeah. You get to what I'm talking about? He's doing all this divine. You understand? Right there in the first chapter of Genesis. Yeah. I've never seen a preacher that's able to explain because he don't know nothing about it. He don't know about the power. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, it's just in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. Earth is out on down on the face of heat. The Spirit of God moved upon the face. I want to know why it was like this. See? Well, I don't believe in better than God been the fault in the potato and body. He never even had a dream. A real good hallucination or imagination. That's right. And he ain't got out of the first chapter in the first sentence. See? He takes it in the beginning of the creed, and, uh, and yet it's the beginning of Moses' vision. See, he got that all twisted. See? And that's not the beginning of creation. Yeah. This is the beginning of creation. When yeah. Yahweh took on Satan, yeah. you know, that's the beginning of creation. Right. Right. I don't read that easy. All you have to do is read Revelation 3.14. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? That's the beginning. <laughs> see, and listen, when God or Yahweh Took on that thing, but right that way he went out of being. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And then you see, it was that form that Moses did. It was with that creation. You understand? Yeah. Do you see that what I'm talking about? All right, read the rest of that verse. And then you pay attention to it. For the invisible things of him. For the invisible things of him. From the creation of the world. From the creation of the world. Are clearly seen. They're seen 
with all clarity. All right. See? All right. Read on. Being understood. Being understood. By the things that are made. Now here's everything in the universe is made up like that. All right, read on. Even his eternal power. Even his eternal power and supernal nature. And supernal nature, all you have in your King James for the God here. So that they are without excuse. See, you ain't got no excuse for your uh, stupidity and right. ignorance. That's right. None at all. But you know what's happened? You know what's wrong? The evidence is so conclusive and uh, abundant. Yeah, you walk around stumbling all, all of it all the time, looking for something. You see, you see. Now let me say this. Now we're talking about the divisions in here. Now here you go. See. Now you put a golden can. Put, put the put the put the the, the, uh, the offer of that sacrifice. Put the labor. See. That's in the outer court. Then you put the golden candlestick and the table of shoe bread and the altar of incense. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you pass through this. Uh, then you pass through this door here or the gate. At the gate here, near the door here, and then you went into the most holy place where you have the Ark of the Covenant with the judgments of glory overshadowing the mercy seat and the commandments in the Ark. You see that now? Now, now? now, I don't have time to go into all this. I told you, I, I want my brethren to say, and look, I got plenty of time. <coughs> see? See? Now look, here you are. All this is just compared. Yeah. See this golden candlestick? You have an A on this has seven branches on it. See, there's seven days in the week and there's seven ages. You want to argue? You see? And then you have an AR on your heart, around your heart. And it has seven branches to it, just like this. See? Now, this is going inside of you now. You see what I mean? Then, here you got a table of shoe bread. See, and here you have a heart. You see what I'm talking about? You, you, you catch what I'm talking about? And, and it, that crown around it, that golden crown around it. See? You see what I'm talking about? And that blood being pumped through this aorta and, and through the heart and lungs. You understand the truth? Don't you know you got some lungs, don't you? Don't you see this here thing here? That's the intercession. See? You understand? Now, we just could go and then somebody said, well, now here you are. You got a brain. Okay? And somebody said, I don't believe that stuff. That the children of Israel come out of the land of Egypt under a cloud. I think that's superstition. Mm -hmm. And here you are. You walk around at it all the time. You creep up brain. You see, in your mind fucking you through your brain all the time. You walk around at it, earn it all the time. Got your mouth gapped open and don't realize that you have a light and a left in the right hemisphere of your brain. You see? And the spirit functions right in your mind. You see, you get the point? See? In the law of the spirit of life, typified by that. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Yeah. Ain't that right? Yeah. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Now the moderator said this a while ago. You see? Somebody said, well, I don't know that. And as you go, sniffing at it. <laughs> see, that's what Dr. has called, you see. You see? <laughs> if you would get that you you be saying this. You just breathe in now. <laughs> See, every day. And somebody, because they don't breathe deep enough, you know, and know that that's the breath of life. Mm -hmm. See, you just about half dead. Mm -hmm. Snipping air. <laughs> you understand? See, that's the breath of life. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm talking about? Just like the way. <laughs> Now you see, when you go inside the tabernacle, in there, now listen, then you go right on the outside and you got the man, you see, you got the cloud, it's a night, every day. You see, you got the man that come down every day. And you may really have the intercession right now every day. You see what I'm talking about? You see what I mean? Now this really, this really sea part, and it went in there, just like this. You see, you come in the day, in the, in the labor, in the door, see, now hit, now watch. There's the most holy place, the holy place in the outer court. There's the same thing. 
the outer courts, the holy place, and the most holy place. This is in the migratory path. No difference in it. Now, I told you that you went through this veil, this first veil. See? See? Here's, here's, here's the first veil. See, the Red Sea opened up, and they went home. See, and they stayed in here 40 years. They were journeyed about it, and they went through the river journey. See, that's one, two, three. One, two, anywhere. I don't care where you want to go. You, anywhere. You see, it just don't make no difference. See? Now, listen, folks. That is pure, profound. Irrefutable, unerring, infallible, accurate, see, no mistake in it. That's the way it works. Do you see what I'm talking about? Yes. And it cannot work any other way. All right. You understand? Now you, yourself, if you would take the 10th chapter of St. John, and the 35th verse, I think, I ain't going to tell you to read it, just never mind. See, uh, they called the Messiah, they got on him because, uh, you know, uh, he said uh, he was the son of God. He said, now how can you say that I blasphemed because I said I was the son? You understand? Didn't you never read over there in the song? Well, I said, and that went on over the head and right on up to the, up the road, and it's still traveling. <laughs> See? Ye are not, uh, ye are the Lord. You understand? Now, then, how, how can you say I blessed me when I, I said that I was the son? Do you see what I mean? Now, I just tried to give you a little smidgen of it. See, just, just tried to give my brethren a little smidgen of it. But I will say this before I sit down. Now look, and listen. That operates from the creation and it's in operation all the way down. Right. Yeah. Sure. Even until now. Right. You see? You see what I mean? And that investigates everything, its function, its operation. There's no excuse for your ignorance. It's none for mine. For the invisible things is understood by the things that are made, yeah. even as eternal power mm -hmm. and God is. Right. You understand? Yes. Right. Now, if that wasn't so, there's no need to argue about Yahweh judging the world in righteousness. Mm -hmm. If it's all so obscure, it can't nobody understand it. Mm -hmm. See, he wouldn't be justified That's right. in judging the man mm -hmm. and then punishing him for all of his ignorance. If he hadn't made blade down with any preparation, but you, me, right. and everybody else <coughs> right. I've given truth. you some idea of the vision. See? And not only that, see, let me say this before I sit down, too. You see, all of this that you see back there, it's got to be fulfilled. Yeah, it yeah. is. You see? It's just got to be fulfilled. You see? Mm -hmm. That's what he is doing. That's what you call your New Testament. I haven't found nobody knows he wants a new testament was yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. You'd be surprised how stupid these people are. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Good education. Got a DD and a PhD and a Master of Arts all tied up behind his name. And he ain't got out of the first verse and the first sentence in the Bible. That's right. You see? <laughs> and then he's talking, standing around talking about revelation. Say ain't nobody understand that. You see, well, I guess not. You see, because you don't understand the beginning of it. If you don't understand the beginning, how are you going to understand the end? See, when you declare the end from the beginning, if you don't understand the beginning, there ain't nothing you can do with it. That's right. See, then there's another thing you can't do. See, you can't come along and tell me something about your Baptist doctrine. See, and your Roman Catholic doctrine. Or any other doctrine. You see? And all the junk and all that you've got all messed up in it and have it in such a way that I can understand with, uh, and practice the thing as you've as you, as you got it. You can't do that. Can't do now you know why you can't do it? Because you don't have no system to it. Right. That's right. That's right. See what I mean? Yes. 
They're always patching up something. Yeah. yeah. Say, uh, that's right. Always patching. We ain't patching up nothing. Right. <laughs> you get the point? Yeah. See? And then for me to try to go to school someplace and try to learn what you all are talking about in this Bible. Yeah, God. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Then it's a matter of impossibility. How are you going to teach me something you don't know nothing about? Then somebody said, well, look, uh, why don't you go out there and join the Roman Catholic Church? They're the first church, now that's a lie, too. The word church uh, means <laughs> congregation or assembly. And here's the first one. Who, who's, who's talking? The Pope? Oh, no, beg your pardon. The boss himself spoke from my son. And he introduced himself, too. He said, I am the Yahweh. No then talk you out of there. And he said, it's about it. Hold it in, no, that's me. That's it. <laughs> Say, oh, I tell you. Now I'm gonna give you. <laughs> I'm gonna give you. And now we have until eleven o'clock. You see. Now does anybody here wants to go home for any reason? I know there's some here that go to work at ten o'clock. You see, and I know they have to go, see. Because they work at night. But I want to give my brethren plenty of time. See, say anything you want to say. You understand? And don't, don't, don't hold, don't hold back to me. Yes, you do. You see, you see what I'm wrong about something else. Hold oh, right in front of everybody. Not my. Right. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, I don't know what you mean, but introduce my beloved. Yeah. Gary Matthews, uh, would you please come forward and introduce? I did that, but, and I want to say this, I demand your sincere and earnest, careful, and please be quiet and give him your undivided attention. just exactly a matter of, you know, just want to hit on saying something. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a matter of profound knowledge. Right. You see, what's happening is this, uh, is uh, unless, as uh, both speakers have indicated, See, this book is sealed. We're seven And there's nobody on earth able to open the book and lose the seal. But uh, just like they told you, nobody can get away. Now, you might not be able to catch even the significance of that. You may take that just like you do everything else in a real passive way and say, oh, well, yeah, I know that. You read that over there in Revelations, you see, and, and go right on. Uh, but I tell you, uh, I believe I can uh, have Dr. Uh, Dinner. Dern, to testify at this time, which I'm just liable to do that too, 
So you can't tell much about me. Uh, about what he has learned. Since he has been down at, at uh, our office, helping us type, Now, I don't believe he hardly has words at his command to tell you what all he has learned. Since he did. Now, he's been coming before he went down and started attacking. He's been coming here for, before that time. But uh, in lining up these words and all, and having to say a thing so that uh, somebody can understand it, it's written in your Bible. It's probably <coughs> we've written and rewritten and rewritten and tore up and uh, rewritten it again and uh, read lettered it and we've done every kind of thing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Doctor Trainum and Doctor Matthew both were uh, at the, the office down there. And, I, of course, I didn't see that I heard him talk about it. Uh, this young man, uh, this man from uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, he thinks, just to show you, he thinks that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses has the truth. And he's hard to get to. And then as soon as you start to give him something, mm -hmm. go. see, he's going to cut out. Yeah, he's ready to go. See? Well, now, you may just think that's a characteristic that is uh, uh, one of the characteristics of Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I humbly beg you. That's right. 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 Yeah. 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 Now, the seven-day advent, the seventh day Saturday is just a day. That's right. Now you try to tell a seven day event something. <laughs> now he's going to insist that says maybe you better open your book for this. So I can get you up on something to say. It doesn't been this and has been that problem trouble. And then there's one or two other things up here I want to bring out. See? Then I just might uh, give it to you. Uh, now I want you to read the, those of you that have the holy name by it. What chapter is the uh, what what the, it's in the first chapter there? about the Sassy And those of you that have the King James Version, why, well, you find it in the second chapter, and uh, and about the first part. Now, now look now. Now, this is what I want you to notice now. I want you to notice this. Now, we're reading over in Genesis. All right. Read these are the origins of the heavens and of the earth. Now sit right still. Don't be moving around and patting your feet on the floor and chewing gum because, see, I can't tell you nothing that way. See? You have to be quiet as Yahweh said himself. Be still. Know that I am Yahweh. Do you understand? Be quiet. That's one of the basic and fundamental tenets of our teaching. Yeah. And be still. Sit down and shut up. That seems like it's a hard job for some, some of us to learn down here. Now you see how that ruin it now. <laughs> Ain't that right? Now, 
I want you to read that uh, uh, fourth verse and the uh, yes, I'm talking about the seventh. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hope. And on the seventh day, the Lord completed his work, which he had made. That's right. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And the Lord blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, uh -huh. because that in it he had rested from all his work, which the Lord created and made. You see that? Now, where, where are you reading that there? Now, look up here. Don't go to sleep. First chapter of Genesis. Now, this is the first chapter of Genesis. Holy name by it. Holy name by it. Now, somebody read it out of the King James Version. It'll be the same thing, only the word is different. But Yahweh is dead. Read it. Hurry up. I'm, I'm in a hurry. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. And all the host of them. And on the seventh day. And on the seventh day. God ended his work. God ended his work. Which he had made. Which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day. And he rested on the seventh day. From all his work. Uh, from all his work. Which he had made. Yeah, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. And God blessed the seventh day. And sanctified it. And sanctified it. Because that in it he had rested. And because that in it he had rested. From all the work which he did. From all the work. Which God created and made. Now, now you see. Now look here what I want to tell you. Now you see this man is reading. Both of them are reading in, in Genesis. Right. right. Now the seven day Adventists will come along and tell you that the Sabbath day was known as far back as uh, Genesis. That's right. You see? And they'll read this to you to prove that, that it was known. See, in other words, from Adam on down knew about the Sabbath day. And yet, yeah. Long before Israel. See? Mm -hmm. Which means Adam, Enoch, uh, Adam, uh, and Eve, and all of them knew about the sixth day. Now he goes back here to, to prove it. See? And he thinks that all of them on down. See? Yeah. Seth, and all of them, Noah and all of them knew about the Sabbath day because it is written over in Genesis. Then you couldn't stop him with nothing. Now, not a one of them knew anything at all about it. Never even heard nothing about it. Now here's what they don't realize. See? Now this is the first time anything ever was said about the Sabbath day. To anybody on earth. All right, read Dr. Hatton, uh, Dr. Brooks, or Dr. Hatton, either one. Now tell them why you read. It's, I think it's the 16th chapter of Exodus. Yeah, right. Then said Yahweh unto Moses. Now then said Yah. Now listen, now this is what we're getting, we're, we're getting now. Well, it's the first time it was ever mentioned. <laughs> and then I'll be back over to Genesis pretty soon. All right. The whole of a rain bread for, from heaven for you. Mm hmm and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, mm -hmm. that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. Mm -hmm. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Mm -hmm. And it goes on down and on the, says that the, 
What did you have to read? Uh, what did you read? Uh, what verse? 26. Huh? 26. 26 verse. Read the 26 verse. Six days we shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, it means that there shall be none. Is that the way that reads in your book? Or? Right. Mm -hmm. Where, where is that? 16, 16, 26. Exodus 16, 26. See? Now that's the first time that anybody on earth ever heard anything at all about the Sabbath day. Right there. Where are you reading that in the 16th chapter? See? Now, uh, the next time they heard something about it, suppose you read that. 20th chapter of Exodus. 20th chapter. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor. Six days shalt thou labor. And do all thy work. And do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh. But the se seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh. Thy Elohim. Thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do anything. In it thou shalt not do anything. Thou nor thy son. Mm -hmm. Thou nor thy son. Nor thy daughter. Nor thy daughter. Thy manservant nor thy maid servant. Nor thy manservant nor thy maid. Nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is mm -hmm. within thy gates. Now, now where are you reading? 20th chapter of and what are you reading? This is Yahweh speaking the law from the mountain. This is Yahweh speaking the law from Mount Sinai. Now I want to point this out to you. See, if he hadn't told them that about giving that manna for six days, right. and then the seventh day was a Sabbath, and then six days, and the seventh day was a Sabbath, see? Before he spoke from the mountain, he couldn't have said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Because they wouldn't know nothing about what he's talking about. <coughs> do, do, do you follow me? Today? Anybody don't follow me, hold up your hand. Don't be bashful, hold it up. Uh, what's that? I would like you to repeat what you just said about uh, uh, it wouldn't have known the Sabbath when he spoke from the mountain. I just said it after you took the 16th chapter and the 28th verse. You see? Well, the 20th, uh, uh, the 16th chapter of Exodus. The 26th. See? And the 26th, see? Now, when he was reading that and speaking from the mountain is in the 20th chapter. See? So now Israel in getting the bread or the man. He told them to gather it six days. And not together and uh, they wouldn't just wouldn't be any going together on the set. But that was a Sabbath. That was a rest. Now I'm, you asked me to repeat. So now I'm telling you if you hadn't told them that in the sixteenth chapter. See, when he spake from Mount Sinai and told them to remember the Sabbath, yeah. they would not have known what he was talking about. That's right. <coughs> you get that? Yeah. Did you catch it that time? Yes. Ma'am? Yes. Okay. She caught it. You see? Well, now, you see, seven day Adventists, you see, they don't see that. You see? So this is the first time in the 16th chapter, there's in the manner, that Yahweh ever said anything to anybody at any time about keeping us out. That's the first time. The second time was when he spake from Mount Sinai to the same Jews. Right. See, and tell them to remember right. that you gathered the man in six days and you rested the seventh at the seventh. Now remember that.
say. Now we're ready for the clinching and the backfiring Genesis. True. See? Now I want you to go to the 24th chapter. Twenty-four and sixteen. And the glory of Yahweh. And the glory of Yahweh. Bowed upon Mount Sinai. Bowed upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it. And the cloud covered it. Six days. Six days. Hold on. See. Finish reading. And the seventh day. And the seventh day. He called unto Moses. He called unto Moses. Out of the midst of the cloud. Out of the midst of the cloud. Now, I didn't tell you what happened. Right there. So the cloud just, it just said right there in the 24th chapter of Exodus. And the cloud covered it six days. That's what it said. And on the seventh day, he called on the Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Is that right? Now, look. Look up here at me now. Now what you have in the first chapter of Genesis, each one of those days, of those six days, see, <coughs> beginning with the first verse, <coughs> Genesis, he's telling you what happened during those six days, that the cloud covered the mountain, you see, and on the seventh day, now that comes right down to the seventh day that you have in Genesis. See? Showing you what happened up here in the mountain. See? Now listen. Listen closely. Now what Moses did was to take the vision that he had during them six days and put it over here in Genesis. And if you look, see, now if you look, now you said the cloud covered it six days and on the seventh day, is that right? right. Well, then Moses put, uh, see, on the seventh, now Moses put the vision over here and you come right back down to that same seventh day, picture, or that same Sabbath that you've got in the first chapter of Genesis. Well, during that same day, they're putting, the, putting over there in the first chapter of Genesis, the vision that they had during those six days. This way. Well, now here's what's wrong. See, seven day Adventist, seven day Baptist, and the world have never woke up. They just sound sleepy as they can be. They have never woke up, woke up to see that Genesis is a vision. Right. They're not going to run by this day. They know that. No, I just brought a. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses eat. You see that now? Now, unless you have somebody to really show you what it is really all about, you're just not going to uh, not going to see what it's all about. Now, is there any, anybody in here that don't understand? You don't? Hold up your hand. Let me know. I'm trying to teach. All right. What's the question? Well, talk out loud. I don't want everybody. Everybody around me. Everybody around me. Pay attention to me. Don't be 
sitting around here whispering. Talk out loud before everybody can hear. That's one of the things I've been teaching ministers to do. See, this ain't no whispering campaign. All right. <laughs> Read out loud. I don't mean to be criticizing no one person. I'm just talking to everybody. Right. And the glory of Yahweh rode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day. Now that seventh day, you just read about that. That 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 seventh day that you got over here in the in the first chapter of Genesis. Or the, or the second chapter of Genesis. That's the same fact. <coughs> Because they put the vision over here. But you got to know what happened during those six days. Now, you want to stand there? Yes. 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 Does anybody else don't understand it? If there is, hold up your hand. Nobody else. Everybody understand now. <laughs> <laughs> See, we won't have no more problems with that. See, everybody understand that now, Ben again. <laughs> Now, if you understand it so well, you try explaining it to a uh, Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> Seventh-day Baptist. <laughs> you see now? See, what Moses did was to take the vision that he had during those six days in the status he did here. See? He just put it over in the front part of the book. Yeah. <coughs> See? Yeah. And over in the front part of the book, he told he said, it says here the cloud covered it six days, and on the seventh he called him Moses out of midst of the cloud. That's what it says over here in Exodus. But the reason why I don't say anything about what happened during them six days is because he took what happened and put it over here in the first part of the book. Can you see that now? In other words, you put the vision in the first part of the book that he saw during the six days the cloud covered the mountain. Then he said it there in the beginning. You see? Meaning in the beginning of his vision. Well, you got that in the first chapter of Genesis in the first verse. In the beginning. In the beginning of Moses' vision. Somebody thought it was in the beginning of the creation. <laughs> See, but that's not it. Right. You see? <laughs> Get the point? Now, I've tried to tell you all this. This is what I've tried to tell you. I've tried to tell you you're not going to rush out here and go down to no library and get no books, no kind of books. See? And unless you come here, you don't have no chance. That's right. I said, come here. You heard me. You're not blind. <laughs> you see? Now I want to show you. I told you the two things I had that, that, that I want to tell you about. See? Okay. Then you find out why I just said uh, for you to come here. Around here, you'll find out. I'm going to tell you about that now. All right, now in the 16th chapter, I mean the 24th chapter of Exodus, I want you to say and read that 24th verse, I believe it is. Exodus 24th chapter. And the 16th verse, I believe it is. The glory of Yahweh 
Old upon Mount Sinai. Nice and tense uh, verses, I believe. Then went up Moses. Now look up here. Look right up here. Don't, 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 don't. Don't, don't look off nowhere. Because if you do, you'll lose the, uh, the, uh, the thought. Now I'm trying to tell you now why I say it. And why these people say, unless you come here, you don't have no chance. Right. All right, read. Then went up Moses. Then went up Moses. And Aaron. And Aaron. Nadab. Nadab. And Abihu. And, and seventy of the elders. And seventy of the elders. And they saw the Elohim. And of they Israel. saw the Elohim of Israel. I don't want to dwell on that. And read up. There was under his feet, as it were. That's right. He paid work of his ceremony. Mm -hmm. And as it were, the body of heaven in mm -hmm. his spirit. All right, read on. Upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. All right, read on. Also they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Yahweh said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Come up in, unto me into the mountain. Now look, there. see they are only part of the way up, to the, up in the mountain. They're not all the way up. You see? That's uh, Moses and the, uh, and, the, and the 70 others here, see? And the here and they, they're not all the way up. Mm -hmm. See? Now, after this, uh, read on. And Yahweh said unto Moses, And Yahweh said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount. Come up to me in the mount. And be there. And be there. And I will give thee tables of stone. And I will give thee tables of stone. And a law. And a law. And commandments which I have written. That's right. That thou mayest teach them. Mm -hmm. And Moses rose up. Now, 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 here's the part I want to get you to see. Now, this is why I'm telling you, unless you come down here, you don't have no chance. You got that, didn't you? Now, that is why I'm telling you. All right, read. And Moses rose up. And Moses rose up. And his minister. And his minister. Joshua. Uh, Joshua. Read. And Moses went up into the mount of Elohim. And Moses went up into the mount of Elohim. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the elders. Now, listen, he, this is what, and that's the part I want. See? And he said unto the elders. Here you us. you stick right here, right here. Right. <laughs> you see? You stay where I uh, uh, left you. Are you keep your seat where you are? You see? Uh -huh. Say what? Until we come the again. Three and he said unto the elders. And he said unto the elders. Carry ye here for you, us. You you stay here. Carry ye here. Uh, how long? Until we come again. Until Joshua and I come back to you. Read. And behold. And if you have any questions. Aaron and her are with you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. <coughs> if any man have any matters to do. If any man have any matters. To do. To do. Let them come unto them. Now you ask them. Listen, now they didn't stick around where he told them to right. stay. Right. Until Joshua and him came back. See? <laughs> now they was up there in the mountain, Joshua and Moses up there in the mountain, 40 days, 40 nights. See? And they didn't hang around there. Now watch what, watch what happened. See? No. They come on back down here. Ain't anyone with them? They come on back down here. You see? And Billy the Golden Cat. Now, if they had stayed up that way, he told them to stay at it, they wouldn't die anymore. That's right. And if you stick around here and listen a while, you understand, like you're told to do, <laughs> you see, you wouldn't get all messed up with this. 
But no, somebody comes down here setting judgment on us. Yeah. As if those things knew all about it. You understand? See, they don't understand nothing about what we're talking about. You see? Get that now? Now what? Now Moses, he's up there getting the table to stone. You see? You see? Well, him, when him and Joshua come back, down there on the mountain, they wasn't there. They went down here and built the golden calf. See? And Moses took that table of stone and threw it down. Got hot. Right? Angry. Threw down the table of stone and broke it. You see? Now here's what else didn't have, didn't have. See? Moses didn't see. See? He didn't see this sin back there in the garden. See? Before he came down with the table of stone. He didn't see that. Now this is the first table. See, he didn't see it as a sin back here. See, but he told these guys, he said, you, 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 you've committed a great sin. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. He, he didn't see the Adamic transgression. Now, why didn't he see it? And what was he doing? Moping out that 40 days, 40 nights. And he, and he don't see no transgression. You see? Well, this is what he was doing. You see, he saw the creation by the pattern. So now look, suppose you, in order to catch it in your book, read it, you got the 24th chapter, read the last verse. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. Mm -hmm. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. All right, now Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. See? Now as we would like, see, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have put that there. You see, we would have put it down at the end. Now take the 25th chapter. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel. That they bring me an offering. That they bring me an offering. Of every man that giveth it willingly. See, that of every man that giveth it willingly. With his heart he shall take my offering. Yeah, see, he shall take my offering. You see? All right, now, let's read on. And this is the offering which you shall take. Uh, 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 see? Gold and silver and Now, you see, I'm t now listen, I'll just cut it up short. Because I know we just don't have a whole lot of time. See? Uh, see, now he's showing him, see, telling him to take the children of Israel, see, and, and, and he's showing him, you see, them other days that he's up there, you see, he's showing him about how to build uh, the, the, the tabernacle and how to build each one of the vessels, see, that's the reason why he didn't see the transgression, see. Hold everything. See, when Yahweh is creating the, and him seeing the vision of the creation, that's the greater and more perfect tabernacle. You see? And this one here that he's showing him, why he did the mount. Now I had you read the last verse of the 24th chapter. Didn't I? Right. See? And then you went into the 25th chapter, didn't you? Right. And then you began to tell them about the offer. And I said that I wouldn't have put, if it had been me right then, I wouldn't have put in the last verse of the 24th chapter that he was in that 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put that there. Mm -hmm. See? <laughs> Get that? Now I want to read the last of the 25th and see if he told him during them 40 days and 40 nights, told him about keeping the still in the mouth of him. And look that thou make them 
after their pattern, which was shown to be in the mouth. Now, you see, he was still in the mouth when he was shown. You see? You get the point? Mm -hmm. She had to come down. Right. So that's the reason why I said, <laughs> you see, had it been me, right? I'd have put it at the end over here. Right. But you see, he went on into the 20th and put it in the end that he was in that 40 days and 40 nights. Then he went on in the 25th chapter and told you about him gathering up and on. Right. You see, and building the sanctuary, and he told him about the, 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 how, how, how the vessels and all was. You understand now? You see? Now when you read the last part of the 25th chapter, he says, uh, according to the pattern which was shown you while he was in the mountain. That's right. Get that now? Mm -hmm. It's right there, you can read it. Right. See, he saw the he saw the vision of the tabernacle in the mouth. See? Now look and listen. She was Moses come down out of the mountain with these tables of stone. Since he just saw the vision up here in the mountain. And he told him about how to build the tabernacle. And the table of stone was to be laid in the Ark of the Covenant. You understand? There was no Ark of the Covenant down here but the laid stone table for the <laughs> So you think Yahweh is dumb? You get the point? See? And that's really my <laughs> See, when he's in, when he's in, there's a time to transgress him. Now look. See? Now this is a sin down here. This is a sin here. Right. See? But he didn't see this one here until after he done, after he seen this one here. Now look. Now then, Yahweh tells him to shoot in the 34th chapter. Now look. You hew you out some stones, just like the first, the first stone, and then this, you bring them up here. You see? And he had to go back up there and then take them tables of stone up there in that mountain. Do you see now? Mm -hmm. Well, when he went back up there to take them tables of stone up in there, you see? Then Yahweh showed him this sin back right here. And then he writes the genealogy right. and the pedigree of oh. Adam and his seed. You understand? Right. He sees what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Well, he can make it down with the other table stone. He <laughs> <It> cooled off. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? And he done told Israel, you know, about making this ark for the cousin. And he had to put his foot, you see. And he wasn't, he wasn't one hot when he got down this other time. He made it. <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> 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 he is cute. He is indeed cute. Do you see? See, the truth about it, see, they didn't do what they were told here. <laughs> you see, he told them to, you, you stay here until, until we get back. That's what Joshua, that's what Moses told them. You wait here on Joshua and me until we come back. But when he, when he, they all went on back down. They didn't do what they were told. See, now look here. Look up here. See, now let, let, me, let me give you a little, that's a little piece of it. Hang this one up, you see, so you just might catch on. Hmm. See, now, this lead in this mouth here, in the top of the outside, right? and there, that sand didn't went on in the ground. Now, listen to me now. I'm talking about the second chapter. Uh, the first and second chapter of Acts of Apostles. See? 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 See?
See, and he told him, said, now look, you go back to the upper chamber where you come from. You understand? And you hang around there. Don't do nothing to your dead feet. You understand that right? Don't start knowing. Isn't that right? And they went back where they went. I know what they did. They come into casting lots. They didn't do what they did. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't do what they told them to do to see who was going to take Judas' place who by transgression fell. Uh -huh. They didn't do what they told them. They took Seth Matthias and Barnabas out of there. Why is it you just can't do like you told me? <laughs> Paul said, when I would do good, <laughs> the devil is better. <laughs> it's got all the way around keeping you from doing good, ain't that right? <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, ain't it something? See? Now they're trying to find out who's going to take the devil for it. <laughs> see? Here he is, the devil up here, you understand? You see the sand? See, they can't not find out who's going to take the devil for it. Because like they're saying up there, because like he's saying down here, he's saying up there in the garden. After the ascension, see, I hear they are down there, yeah. casting lots. <laughs> <laughs> now, you what got him into that? Uh, what got him into that trouble? <laughs> see, before he ascended there in, in Luke twenty-four forty-four, mm -hmm. you see, then he opened their eyes, opened their understanding in the scriptures, and told them that all that was in the scriptures had to be fulfilled. Oh. Ain't that right? Yeah. You see. <laughs> You see? And they began to open up their understanding. And then they began to look down in the scriptures. Uh, after that, and they seen that Judas, uh, see, somebody had to take his place. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Boy, he's just a dog. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. <laughs> See, so, so after he opened their understanding, they, he gave them the keys then. Mm -hmm. that, that's the real meaning of giving them the keys. Mm -hmm. Well, now, what are the keys? Mm -hmm. The keys are the law and the prophecy mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit yeah. to interpret right. it. That's, that's it. the keys. Yes, <laughs> See? That's the keys to the king. See? Then, now look, sing it at that one boy, Pete. So that I'll give unto thee the keys of the king. Roman Catholic, grab it. Oh boy, they bitch, you see, they almost just put pole sinking all out of here. Yeah, but you see, this is the part that is. He said, what I say unto one, I say unto all. So he gave them all the keys. The knowledge of the law and the prophecy. You see what I mean? Now if you read over there in Luke, he said, and then opened he up there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Understand. Yeah. There who led them. Mm -hmm. Not Jews. Because Jews were dead. Yeah. Yeah. Now, have you learned anything at all tonight? Yeah. Have you learned anything at all? Yeah. <coughs> well, maybe there's just one more thing I want to tell you. Now, I told you they didn't know nothing about the Sabbath. 
Right. In other words, look here. Here is Adam. He was put in the garden. I'm talking about the Sabbath now. Here is Adam. That's what he might be doing. Take you back to this. Sitting down, baby. He wasn't doing nothing. See? Did I wait when he took him in that garden? He told him to put him in there to take the, the, the what? The dress and keep it. Is that right? Yes. Sir. But look, see, it was already in fruition. See, there wasn't no old limbs on it. He didn't have to do no whoring around and digging around. It was already in fruition. So he told him not to piece of it. Is that right? Now here's what I'm trying to show you. See, he was he was in the Sabbath. Our uh, Sabbath means rest. He ain't do anything. See? Get it now? He don't have nothing to do. See? But now look at look look where the trouble started at. Now when he committed the sin, then he has to go out. Get the, and he has to go out and start getting busy, work. In the sweat of thy face till thou eat bread until you return unto the ground. In other words, Adam then has to work six days. See? Now you are the human race. You are the Adamic. See? See? Now you have to work and we haven't had no Sabbath. That's what Paul is telling you in the second chapter of the life. You want to read it? We who? You see? All right, now, now let me show you. Now be fulfilling the law, Dad. Now you have to look up. You have to keep your eyes open. And don't you see that you have to, at uh, first place, I have to find some words. You see? see it, it, you just don't run up here and say, we're all for Jesus, and, and then everybody gets shouting. <laughs> the thing in there that Jesus said, it, you understand what I'm talking about? Now look, I get on the staff that was under the law. Get in this bread and rest. Now here you go. If you look in Matthew, you look in Luke. I don't have time to go into all this. It's just too much reading now. See, you will find that that Friday, that was the Jews' preparation day. See? And they, <clears throat> they, they ate that supper. Mm -hmm. See? It's far. Uh, <clears throat> now, on a Saturday, you watch now, Saturday was a Sabbath. Now he's fulfilling this. Now here is fulfilled. Yes, laying out there in the cemetery. Listen, no pulse beat, no eyes batting. See, see none of that. Rich. That was a Sabbath. That was a renewal of that Sabbath. 
at early in the morning, first day of the week or Sunday morning. Now you can't say he didn't teach the Sabbath. Now when Jews was watching him around before, he went out in the corn field, you see, hearing the disciples, and he puffed it on the Sabbath day. See, and they brought an accusation this day, didn't they? You see? And he said, now, that he was Lord of the Sabbath. I was Yahweh of the Sabbath. Is that right? And listen, the Sabbath was made for the man. See, not for him. That's right. You see? <coughs> you see? You get the point? That's right. And they were the ones that were supposed to rest. You see? But they brought that accusation again. But, uh, but, but now, what I, want, what I want to point out, please, brother. See, this time, when he's laying out that Joseph's new tomb, the stone rolled up to the door. He didn't bat an eye. A pulse didn't beat. Nothing. Now, what about that? He almost kept that lid in. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> you, you see? That's great. Oh, yeah. Moved it out of the way. See, now that was the old Jewish Sabbath. You see, but now look, going clear back to Adam now, coming on through. After Adam, the second Adam, fulfilled this. You see, now Paul is telling the second chapter of Colossians. You see, clear see, that we haven't had no Sabbath. See, we haven't worked our six days yet. See, if you take 4,004 and, and where we are now and add them together, that ain't 6,000 years or six days. You see? But you coming up on it. <laughs> yeah. You see that now? Now, I... So time to let it So I, I, I'll say the other thing here. There's some other time that I wanted to take. So if you if you want to go, why well, then let's uh, stand and have the benediction. Of course, I could tell you in a minute, but if you meant that, we still don't go. Yes. Do that. Yes. Well, now here's what I want to tell you, the other thing. See. Now, by Moses putting this back here about the Sabbath, you can see that Moses wrote it because didn't nobody know anything about it but the Moses and the children that didn't know anything about the Sabbath. You see? You see? In other words, what he put back there in Genesis, you see, was his vision that he had, so didn't anybody know anything about it. Now, that proves that Moses wrote it. That's one of the positive proofs that Moses wrote the book of Genesis. You see the point? Now here's the other. At the third chapter of Exodus, I'm going to tell you this real, pretty quick. Third chapter of Exodus, you will find, listen now, that nobody, and look now, when I say nobody, if you take me for what I just say, I said nobody. That's right. And you leave it like I put it. See? I'm going to explain so you won't have to. <laughs> See? From Adam on down, knew his name. Because he didn't reveal it to us. See? He was known as the Almighty Provider. Is that right? That's right. In the third chapter of Exodus, he told you. Is that right? right. Mm -hmm. He said, now wait a minute, don't, don't start calling him a liar. It's all right if you want to call me one, but please don't call him no liar. He said, in the third chapter of Exodus, that they did not, he, that's what he said, not me. 
Is that what you got there? That's right. Try and read this one. And I appeared unto Abraham. And I appeared unto Abraham. Unto Isaac. Now look, you got a very big problem up there trying to find out who Joshua is over here with Moses. When he appeared down there, you understand? And say, you got a very big problem. And you're scratching your head, you're wondering and carrying on about that. Said, look, yes, that I appeared long before then to Abraham. Uh, now, appearance means, uh, you see, it means that you get, you see me as, 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 as I am, you understand? Before, long before they appeared to down here, the, the, the Moses and Joshua, the Joshua. How am I doing? Right. See? But now, there's a problem there. They say, but, but, but by my name, Abraham, none of back there. They didn't know my name. Mm -hmm. Yahweh. <laughs> See? But this is where they knew him. They knew him as the almighty provider. Let me make some provisions, if you please. <laughs> See? When he put Adam in the garden, he said, the Lord God, that's Yahweh. <laughs> So he planted a garden east in Eden, and he put the man in it. Is that right? And it was in fruition. Is that right? In other words, he provided something for him to eat. You see what I mean? Not only that, see, everything, see, that he did. See, God like when there's a famine and up here in the land. You understand? He provided something down here for him. Right. You see? Get the point? He provided the means of building an ark. He's a provider. They didn't know that body by his name. You see? Get the point? Now when you go over in the second chapter of death, you see, you'll find Lord said, Lord is translated Yahweh. Now look, look, watch me now. That too proved that Moses wrote it. Right, right, right. Because couldn't nobody else write it because nobody down there knew his name. See them clinches? <laughs> you see? Did you get that? Yeah. You find Yahweh all through the book of Genesis. Right. And nobody through the book of Genesis knew anything about his name. Right. See? And that proves that he revealed his name. See? To Moses. Where was that? At the burning bush. Well, he revealed his name to Moses. See? This point. And he was the first. Get this one. And only man on earth that knew his name. Mm -hmm. See? So couldn't nobody else write the book of Genesis but Moses. Because it was the only man on earth that knew his name. Let's go. <laughs> I'm always happy and glad to stand up and to testify of our thoughts. And I want to let you know something. I'm not ashamed, and I'm not so timid that I'm afraid to speak out or fear somebody might hear. I'm not ashamed.
Hallelujah, and thank you, Dr. Henry C. Kenley. Now at this time, the Charlotte, North Carolina Bible class would like to thank all of our brethren, visitors, and friends who are taking the time to come out and study with us tonight and hope that you will come back and study with us again. Our class is held on every Monday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And our SoundCloud tape is every third Monday of each month. Zoom participants, please remain muted until the host has ended our YouTube broadcast. We will now conclude tonight's class with the doxology coming from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.